Father, we give you praise. You love us so much. Your grace is sufficient. Cover us with your presence. Let the blood of Christ reach out to people through this message. And Lord, as we continue with this, the work, this work, your presence confirm us. In Christ we pray. Wonderful. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church Bahati. Thank you. I know you are with us. In our YouTube and Facebook, Bishop Peter Gatimo and also Apostolic Faith Church Bahati. God bless you so much. Remember our, our last message. Hus husbands, what do you want? Now we are in that message part B. I want to introduce to you uh, something, some of the expectations of your husband. Husbands, and please, let me say this with wives. If you want to study something, be faithful to it. Like, no, this is a chair. You can't be so critical to this chair to an extent you demand that this chair turn around to be bed. You can only be faithful if today you are doing a PhD in zoology. You can only be so faithful to the creation the way it is and you study deeply. If today you are studying about Bishop Katimo, you can't be so critical and expect to know me. You can only be critical in a faithful, relevant way and, and discover Bishop the way God made him. Oh, some wives want this. You want the husband who never exists. You demand a husband who is not if you went into marriage, first of all, accept this is the husband God has given me. I want to give you a key. Instead of setting some demands, this is something that I've learned is practical because we need to, we need to share things that are workable. Can you spend one year or two years studying your husband faithfully? I know he has weaknesses, but you can master if today we are able to tame a dog, a wild dog, how do we do it? We started the dog faithfully, and then we are able to know how to turn it around. If we are able to tame a, respar, a, a leopard, how do you go about it? If you are, you are approaching a very wild leopard, the first thing you do is to study it faithfully. Understand the instincts, understand the response, understand the creation, understand the mind, the setup and attitude. And then from there, you can tame the real part. It doesn't matter how your husband is. I've been preaching for the last 40 years, and I tell you, we have tamed people. One time, I read, they came to me and said, Bishop, you know something? My husband eloped away with our house help. There's a girl who used to watch work uh, in their house and somehow I think there was something wrong. The wife used to quarrel the husband in the presence of that girl. And the wife used to leave a bit early to go for work, business. So the husband will delay a little bit. All the husband failed to get from the wife he will desire to get it. He will desire to get it from the house house. And that girl would remain behind and say, Hello, Baba, let me give you some food. Let me help you to get your socks. Let me help you to get what you want. And the husband developed a feeling that what I really want from the wife, I'm getting it from the house help. Later, the wife reacted. And the man said, no, 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 no. This is the order. If I'm walking out of this house, I'm walking out of this girl. And actually, they went out. And started living together as a husband and wife. And started getting children. And something funny, the in-laws, the parents of that man, accepted the new girl as a wife. 
And then the, the wife came around, that is the, the, the first one, came as a bishop. And I, I sense she was suffering from stroke. The experience was so severe. And I tell you, it was, power, it was painful. I said, Bishop, please help me get back my husband. One, we needed two things. One, power of God to intervene. Number two, the love, of, the love that this man is looking for. We prayed and prayed a lot. And finally, you know, some prayers are working. I said, God, because of this woman, I declare that that other relationship you destroyed. And I fasted about it. And they had one kid. And they little differed. And the man who never knew me came around the church and said, Bishop, I believe you are the pastor to my wife. Yes, please help me get back my family. And I thank God that today, they are church leaders and they are settled in their own property. Well, the, and the wife today loves that man. Hey, wonderful. The first mistake, the mistake that was there in the beginning was never repeated. And that is very important. Very important. The Lord is powerful. So I would like to share with you some of the expectations of that husband that you have. One, I say to you, Please, this new man, don't assume he is your husband until he's made your husband. He is your husband legally. He is your husband at a covenant. But in practice, you need to have this man transformed to be your husband. The same thing, the husband needs to do something to make the wife a real wife. What you have initially is a man who has never been in a marriage. And now, I, I always tell people, it is very easy to wait, but it, it takes time to marry. Work out. Marriage is an experience. Wedding is an occasion. And young people, be careful. Because you just get to marriage and assume, we are married, we are married, we are good. You wedded, but work out your marriage. And what I can say in this issue today is you as a wife take at least one year or maybe some months to go to what you call the school of my, hus my husband. Study that man. Study him. However weak or strong he is. You know, I, I, I met a single lady who said to me, Bishop, please, if I want to get that husband who is being thrown out of the house. I want to get that man whose wife is saying is nonsense and useless. I said, now, why do you want to get somebody's husband? Because it is easy to nurture a man who had existed in a marriage before. What else? She said to me, I am able to build that nonsense into sense. I'm able to build that useless into useful. I'm able, she was said, I'm able to build that man who is non-performing, even in sex, to a powerful man in bed and in life. He said, give me the weak I'll build to be strong. What are you looking for? He said, I just look for a female. I have capacity to make my own man. And I say, it's interesting. It's not the first time I've heard, from the, uh, I've heard that. And one uh, such woman came to my office and said, Bishop, I've existed as a single lady and I had uh, a funny uh, evil life. I always take away people's husbands. And she said to me, the one I have in my house, we've stayed over so far for, my, for some years, and, um, and I was interested to know, how do you get people's husband? She said, Bishop, she smells said, Bishop, it's so easy. I just need to get him in my room. Bishop, we, want, we know how to create men from people who appear to be not men. And she said what they do. And the way, they, the way they keep them. So she said to me, no, no, Bishop, I got saved. 
I want this man out of my house because let him go back to his family. I said, no, it's okay. He should get out. And said, no, no, you know something? He has refused to get out. He is saying, if I go back to my former, to my wife, I will not survive. He said, you are, he said, this is like a prostitute. This woman, you know how to take care of me. And you know, this man got some millions of money and purchased 15 acres prime light lad for this prostitute or for this single lady. So I'm saying to you, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing, if you really want marriage, marriage is created. Don't demand it if you not want for it. And therefore, uh, to answer this question to our sisters, I would like to encourage you, take some time, one, be active, be awake. You can't be in school while you are so sleepy, you are, you are so lazy. And as a person reports to school, to class, when he, is, she is, he or she is late, be awake to study. Be alert to know. I would like to go to what we call the school of my husband. Not the school of a husband. The school of my husband. It's very easy to turn around a weak man to be strong. Yes. You know Christ loved the church in two ways. First, he gave himself to, to people who are sinners. First of all, take them by his love from hatred to righteousness. That's the first love Christ offered. The second love Christ offered is to receive the transformed people to be his own. I'm teaching about life, love in marriage that leader makes a husband. Love that man as a raw material. Raw material is something that needs to, to undergo a process to become final product. It's like sugar cane. Sugar cane need to undergo a process to become pure sugar. Your husband is like sugar cane. It is in marriage that he will undergo process to become product. Actually, what you call honey and sugar in honeymoon is not yet formed. What you have in honeymoon is just eros, that romance, opposite sex attraction, which can end very soon. Honeymoon is yet to come. People like us in our age, we are entering your honeymoon. We don't struggle. What you have after wedding, you call honeymoon. I know my sister there will have it. Let me advise you are enough. It's not real. It is fulfillment of attraction. So in your mind, you know, there's a likelihood that very soon we have conflict in several areas because we will become blended together. And actually to become one practically, you have to be worked it out. And then later, if you are wise enough, prayerful enough, persistent enough, you come to your honeymoon. Whereby you just love each other, there's no issues. You stayed with your wife enough. You could do not. You don't have to react. If today I react to my wife, she, she is so strong in my in my life as in my house. She has been there more than 30 years. Almost 35 years. I married her when she was young. Actually, uh, there's nowhere to go. Whatever I am and we have is our life. <laughs> but for us to become, we have we had to work out and produce. And actually, as we handle this issue, I would like to tell wives, please, it's very easy if you just reach out to the heart of the man and you practice the love of Christ for some time, you will get the product. I say it is two levels. One, love the person not as a net product, but as raw material to be transformed to be profitable. You don't marry a net product. You marry raw material. And the process you involve, go to a factory. Go to Mumia Sugar Factory. When they put sugar cane, the first part 
is to remove all the dirty, dirty things in the raw material. There's a lot of mud. The second thing now is to process. And then they produce something which is not sugar, but is somehow like sugar. And that process is get the real sugar. I want to introduce to three processes. The first process in your marriage is to wash your marriage and remove, the, it, remove all the mud. It's not enjoyable. But please don't give up. As long as you are alive and working out, you are getting to second level. It's when you produce something sugar, but not complete sugar. But it's somewhere enjoyable. And the third level is when you get that product, sugar. Now it can be used. It can be consumed. And it's so easy. Don't fear. And I want to tell you, wives, that can only happen if you use the love of God. Marriage cannot survive the steps I'm talking about with mere attraction. Attraction can be challenged, but the love of Christ has overcome death. And I want to tell you, men desire to be loved with a very tender love because men in marriage, they don't bring their mind first. They bring their hearts. Men, what the problem, the problem that Adam had was not the mind, it's the heart. He had already finished the project of giving names to all items and all animals. It was not failure of the brain. It is the desert, the void in the heart. And therefore, it's good. Even if your husband will open up and become productive in the brain, the touch will come from the heart. If you tell your husband, now, gentlemen, I believe within two years you are going to buy a good car. What you have done, you've not spoken in a reasonable or rational way. You have spoken that in an emotional way. And husband will like to honor the praise of wives. We, when we are loved, we become slaves of your feelings. But married wives, as after you get to middle life, we get used to each other, you realize that your husband out there can offer feelings, but in the house, there's no room for feelings. And for that to happen in middle age, wife should be very prayerful. Wife should be very prayerful. And therefore, men are looking for tenderness, tender love. The second thing men are looking for, men are very sexual, but men, they are sexual in honeymoon. The sex you have in honeymoon is a product of attraction and expectation. When your husband has sex with you in honeymoon, it's an outcome of what he thinks about you. He thinks you are the best sugar around. <laughs> he thinks you are the best prophet around. And because of the imagination he had about you, he's very sexual. And of course, it's the first encounter of people who have attraction opposite sex. But when you stay on, and the husband realizes you are not the one he thought, there are two wives that fight in your husband. The wife he was expecting, and the wife he is receiving. And that gap should not exist. And therefore, I urge men, Divorce the wife you imagine and accept the wife who is coming and the problem will not be severe. So sex, the, the sex you have in, ma after, in honeymoon is very active, very active, very vibrant. But it's, it's the husband who really wants to do sex with you very much. But after, after you stay on, the husband appears to be going down. You know why? Because is the wife to keep the fire. You, the attraction that I saw when I was marrying you should be renewed through character. Do you know men in middle age are attracted more? It's good that you be smart, but they wait for the character. Character, if today you serve, you've seen that women, you go to a hotel, you go to a meeting, you serve somebody's husband very honorably, maybe some food, and you find this man getting attracted. Because men in middle age, the beauty of a woman in middle age is her character. 
But some women are spending a lot of time dressing and spending minimal time in working out character for marriage. The question is, my husband, what do you want? That's what we are, we are trying to answer. And men want sex. Sex that is preceded by peace. Preceded by emotions. Preceded by a talk that is enhancing. Preceded by care. And men also want a wife who will never at any time prevent her from having sex at any time he wants. Unless there's some, some, some medical impediment. You know, when that man goes out there and is attracted by the women, and he remembers how the wife is open to him sexually, he will not be tempted out there. He knows, even now, if I call my wife, maybe we get out somewhere. She's ready to offer these services. I trained one lady on love. And the husband, he said to me, you know, Bishop, when we go to bed for sex, and my husband looks at my body, her body, her sex organ dies off. I said to her wife, you are the cause. I trained her on how to touch the heart and the feelings of a man. And now they have become so vibrant. So one time we were in the office, my office, and the husband called. I said, no, you go to your husband. Do you know what happened? They had, the husband was calling her because he could not wait until evening. He said, I just feel at the middle of the day, I stop everything and go out to for sex. I called the lady later at 3 p.m. He said, you know, Bishop, my husband just wanted sex. And it was so enjoyable. And he said, my wife, we have done it during the day. I still need more at night. That man who, who could not perform now is like a, mach a sex machine. And at the same time, because sex in marriage is like an ordinance. When you do sex with your husband, it's not something just physical. It is a godly ceremony. When it done so much, it causes both of you, when you got, get out there, you just want to please your love. You know that couple later came to the church with a property worth almost 10 million, a vehicle. And before then, they used to borrow food from me. I taught love. God bless love with, with, with the property. Check people who don't have love. Se close sexual relationship. Close sexual love relationship. Their work is not blessed. One, most husbands, when you get out there, out there, whatever work you do, you want to please your marriage because it pleases you. Not children first but your partner. And friends, that's who husbands are. Now we will continue next time. I hope you have had something good to help you. And please, if you are God ready to work, remember the love of Christ. For you to understand that man, first of all, apply the love of Christ. It is double. Two way. One, love a person as a raw material. Christ loved us when we were yet his enemies. Through that love, he changed us and washed us. He came back and loved us as his children, and he welcomed us to the kingdom. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible says, and he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be uh, teachers. Actually, we became co-workers with Christ, co with Christ and adopted sons in the kingdom through Christ. I pray it is now clear you can have a good marriage. Remember the question is, my husband, what do you want? Now you know something about that man. Practice it at your work. And some young girls around here are now getting some understanding. I see Rachel and somebody else. I know you're not mess with your wedding. I'm very soon expecting to have your wedding and some other people there. You can't mess. You have the knowledge. 
We who have been there can tell you, you can avoid some pitfalls. You don't have to suffer because other people suffered. They suffered to make sure that when you come, you don't undergo the same pain that they underwent. May God bless your marriage. I release this love, understanding, favor, breakthrough, deliverance on your marriage. Yes, you wife, you're asking. My husband, what do you want? And I say, in just name, in a very godly way, you are winning back your husband. May God bless you, cleanse your wedding, cleanse your marriage, and establish a note of that family. In Christ we pray and we believe. Amen. God bless so much. God keep you.